of that specifically, or that's how you were able to? No, I didn't see photos of the boots. I had a spare pair that I gave the the sheriff, and they confirmed that the boots lined up. They were the same brand and make and. Got it. Um, Jake, just a quick question for you. Yeah. You mentioned that did the United Cajun Navy search this area, or I? I um, so you know, our our search area um, was 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 past this point. So um, you know, local authorities, fire department, everybody that did the initial two day search, we didn't get involved until I think day three. Um, and so outside, we basically started where they left off and we, we moved out from there. And this would have been in that original two mile radius that they had been, I had been told had been searched. By the Sac County Sheriff's Office, you were told that area had been searched? Um, by, actually by the, the person that communicated it to me at that point was a, a fire official that joined us on the volunteer search the first day. He kind of, we used him to kind of tell us where they were at for those first two days. And um, he is the one that had kind of communicated to me that these areas had been searched. And so, like I said, we went from there out. And the way that we do search, we have an app that allows us to be able to mark areas <laughs> green, red. I mean, I think over this whole thing, you guys have seen those some of those images. Um, that, that original area was just marked green out the gate because it had been, from, from my understanding, it had been searched by professionals. You know? Well, the, the day he was... Well, his, the day his truck was found, I know they have a DOT drone that has infrared heat seeking. That would have searched that area. That would have searched the radius. That's where some of those questions are going to come. That's where some of those back end questions is whether it was there this entire time or not. And sir, you posted news every night on Facebook because you sort of garnered this widespread nationwide. Just thank you for not forgetting. Um, that was one of my biggest fears is everyone would just stop searching and he's, he's still missing. And I started counting because every day matters, you know, every day my kid's dad is gone. It matters. He's such a good father. It's not fair. I don't know what happened. And I suppose I'm just kind of curious about funeral arrangements. Has that, has that been made yet, or is that still in the works? Um, so I did have a talk with her shortly about that as we were kind of waiting on everybody to get here. Um, obviously, we got to wait for the state examiner's office to get done with what they're doing. Um, but we're going to stand next to her and help her with as much of that as we possibly can, you know. unforgettable anyone that knows him he has so many friends and you know I don't remember like you know I try to think of things and it's, it's the things that you take for granted just like him watching you know YouTube crash videos and trying to teach the kids what went wrong you know he's always trying to teach these little lessons to him and um, to open the doors for women and respect your mother. He has old school values that's hard to match. How do you want your, the kids you share to remember? He loved him so much. He didn't like to go anywhere without him. He brought them with him, you know, even to the, just the store downtown, and he brought them um, trucking this summer for the first time, so they got to learn what he does and his work ethics. I know that's important for him to, you know, not half-ass things, do it the right way the first time, and he's constantly teaching them lessons and molding them to be good men. I'm sorry if you've been asked this question already, but how important is it to have hope to know and not have hope and not worry and not, you know, just... 
my biggest thing was to find him just to not wonder where is he every day you know that's a big step um I hope that we can find out what happened and why but the biggest relief is is it here he's here you know it matters what happened to him but I'm just you know enjoying the fact that I know where he is now like I can sleep a little bit easier. One last question for me. Do you remember your last interaction with him? Um, on the way, he gave me a kiss goodbye, and and he said, "Gotta go, baby." You know. And then. Love touch, you, baby. Touching on the fact that he never did, but I think touching on the fact too, and this has been communicated in past articles, but about the fact that there was one of the boys that wanted to hug or kiss and he said sorry buddy gotta go no time gotta go buddy no time gotta go you know so. he didn't know you know he didn't know it'd be the last the last goodbye would have never left without kissing him you know and, uh, that's a hard one to do good you're doing good you're doing amazing anything from you guys um Approximately what time and how did you find out that David's body had been <coughs> um, my, my boss, um, my boss kind of tricked me in, into going for a car ride. He said, hey, I like to go on a car ride on nice days. How about you? And Okay, so I got in his truck and we were driving just talking work stuff, safety stuff. I'm the safety coordinator and... I didn't understand it all until we got to about my house and he and he grabbed my hand and said, I know you've been through a lot and the sheriff called and he wants me to meet you here at your house to talk to you and so I knew we'd been found. Like this day I've been dreading but hoping, you know, at the same time would come and it finally came and it was surreal. I, I had a feeling he would be found for some reason during when when the farmers were getting their fields ready. But I just didn't know, you know, when. And it was yesterday. It finally happened. You know, I fear I answer the phones at work, or I, I used to answer the phones, and I can hear the phone ring. and or sometimes the sheriff will come to serve papers or whatever to someone and every time I'm wondering is this the day is this it and it's finally here it's finally over it's they found him can you talk about the range of emotions that you've been experiencing since you found out I think that that one's pretty obvious I mean she's obviously struggling with it somewhat but you can, yeah you can answer it yeah. um Uh, relief. Relief is a big one. And sorrow, you know, it's confirmed that what we thought. You know, I know I know he would have never left us unless something bad happened. And something bad happened, I know. It was confirmed. So you still suspect all of them? I can't think of any reason why he would have walked a mile and a half out into the middle of a field and laid down and taken his coat off and shut his truck off. Truckers don't shut their trucks off. They don't shut them off until they're done for the day. He would have never shut the truck off. I don't, things don't add up, don't line up. I suspect foul play, yeah. Our, my daughter was home visiting. My grandson was here for Thanksgiving. He was looking forward to spending, getting done with work, and coming home, spend time with him. And I can't think of a good reason to get out of the truck and walk in the middle of a field. I don't really want to talk about that. 
Yeah, I think that's something that we just need to wait on. Um, you know, like I've said, after today, media inquires to Sarah can stop. If there's anything else that needs to be, you know, talked about as far as that stuff as the investigation goes on. I'm more than, I, I, I deal with media regularly. I think most of you here know me. Um, I'm more than willing to, to work with you a little bit if I can, um, but I'm only going to uh, convey the information that I have that I have confirmed. You guys heard from the farmer who came across his body? No. We have not. But I do know who, or I know who owns the land because, you know, based off of our property permissions that we were able to acquire through this entire search. So I know who owns the land. I can imagine that it was either you know him or one of his employees, but I, I I don't think either one of us have any knowledge on exactly who was the one to make that call. Was there any evidence that he had been moved anywhere to that location or anywhere around the field? You know? Um, you know, until we get the you know report from the state examiner's office, or until we kind of know what the state of decomposition is, 100 percent, it's hard to say. Um, if I, you know, personally would have saw that, then I could have probably made that, or I could have at least made an educated guess on that. But I don't, I don't have that information at this point. Do you know how long the autopsy will take? Generally, in these, generally about a before you get the report and everything, we generally see about a three to four day period. And then, have you received any other updates today from DCI or the sheriff? I haven't. No. She has not. No. I don't know. I don't know anything about like decomposition, but I feel like he was out there for five months and thing is I can't believe it wasn't just bones by now, but we're not knowing either. there's animals, vultures, coyotes. And from what they made it sound that Nothing was missing on him. He wasn't just bones. So I don't understand how that can be. Because to me, five months is a long time to be out in the elements and the fluctuating weather. And But I haven't seen him, so I don't know. And we did have a very unusually warm winter this year. I mean, yeah. I think everybody knows we didn't get near the snow we've had in the past and near the cold weather and freezing weather that we've had. And so, you know, um, decomposition should have happened. So, you know, in my, you know, it, it, if the body doesn't line up with decomposition, then I would, I would, I would venture to guess that it hadn't been there for five months. But like I said. It's an educated guess based off of just the little bit of information that I know right now. Now, you said that he was found in a field. Can you kind of describe a little bit of the area? I don't um, know. I, I can somewhat, yeah. yeah. Um, open farm field, freshly tilled, um, along a creek bed, from my understanding. And when he went missing, the fields were empty, and yep. there was no snow. And there's been no crop planted since, so, you know. I just can't understand how he couldn't have been found, especially by drones. With the drones, with the drones flying that two mile radius in the first few days, no, those weren't our drones. Our drones flew outside of there, and we did fly some of those areas, um, but not like very close to there, but not there. Um, but with those, with with thermal drones, um, by the time that we were here, by the time that everything kind of. By the time we would have flew in that area, a thermal drone wouldn't have done as, as much good as it would have done those those first two days. Because your body's gonna hold heat for a certain amount of time, right? But it, it, to not be picked up on that thermal drone in those first, you know, two days, it, like I said, I would venture to guess that it wasn't there at that point. Anybody else got anything? My support system has been amazing. amazing. All the way through. All, yeah, um, my mom and my fam my brother and sister-in-law were there last night, and they'll continue. And people are already wanting to stop by and stuff, and they haven't forgotten. I have 
several, several, several messages and calls and they'll continue. But yeah, I have a really good support system. My family is 90% of them live in Sac County, so. Anything else from anybody? Yeah. Thank you, Sarah.